All right, we got a product. And before I show you the product, I'm going to tell you what we're going to use this for. We're using this for rust repair. Now, when I say rust repair, I'm talking about very hard to reach or very inconspicuous uh, uh, rust repairs or very, very minor rust repairs. We're not talking major stuff here. We're not talking concourse restoration, rotisserie job, rust repairs here. What we are talking about is when we got a car like this, and this car is really clean, and you can see I've already done a lot of work to it. I already went ahead and painted the inside of the trunk. We had the car blasted. We put our two coats of epoxy on it. We got our Pour 15 already installed. If we walk down here, you can see all the front ends ready. Um, it's ready for the motor and transmission and drivetrain to be installed. But underneath, okay, underneath the car, there's some very minor rust that needs repaired. Let's get up under there. I'm going to show you what we're talking about, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. this area right here we're gonna go ahead and I want you to pay close attention you can already see that I painted it black but what I did before I painted it black is I taped this area off you can see where the sands falling out all right and you can also see that there's rust here this rust to fix this rust and when I say fix it I'm talking about cutting this out and replacing this 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 little section of this floor whatever's going on here they replace these floors but if you look right here you can see where they didn't replace the floor all the way to the end here what they did they cut out the rusted area that they saw in the middle of the floor and then they went ahead and threw the pan in here and then welded it on top and then on the bottom they went ahead and seam sealed around it now I went back and seam sealed all this uh, where they uh, sandblasted off because the bottom of this car has been sandblasted but we found this section right here, and now here's another thing before we go any further. The rust that you're looking at, the rust pits that you're looking at, those are dead. The rust is killed. When this was blasted, it killed the rust, and it will not rust back. But what we need to do to fix this up and basically make it presentable when you look up under the car and you don't see any rust um, we are going to use a two-part epoxy in this and what that epoxy is going to do it's a two-part epoxy paste and it's not JB Weld just for you to tell you that that's not what it is okay we're gonna go look at it in a second but what we'll do is we'll take our epoxy paste and we will fill this in and then we'll smooth it all out nice and neat and then once that dries it takes about 45 minutes for it to dry we'll come back and we will paint that area that has the rust. Now there's other sections on this and I believe okay it's on the other side but right now let's concentrate on this. I'm going to show you how to use this stuff and I'm going to show you the product that we're going to use to make this all work and save you some money, save you time and give you something to do as a DIY project at home. Alright so we saw the rust that we're going to repair and the product that we're going to use, I want to bring that up there. We're going to use this product right here. It's called PC7 Epoxy Paste. Now it requires two items here. It requires part A and part B. One is actually the compound and the other one is the hardener. Anybody that's been watching my videos, everybody that watches my videos knows that when you hear the word hardener, that means that it's an epoxy. When you hear the word activator, that means that it's a primer or a paint. 
So this is a epoxy paste, and we're going to go ahead and use this. Now you can buy this, you purchase this stuff in several different quantities, all the way from an ounce up to a pound. This is your half pound uh, purchase that you're looking right here. This is about $40, I would say, if you can find it when you search the internet. Now, I ordered this, and I'm going to be honest with you, the cheapest place I found this stuff was at Walmart. I got online, and I put it in, and Walmart was the cheapest. So, shop around. You can find this stuff. Um, I bought this. They didn't give it to me. This is not a hokey pokey uh, uh, review of this product. I'm showing you what I use and what you do with this. So the first thing we need, we need a piece of cardboard. We also need a Bondo spreader. It doesn't have to be brand new. It doesn't have to be clean. All right. We got a throwaway brush. We're going to need that. I got a couple paint sticks right here to mix it up as well and use the paint sticks. I got a cup and another product I got is acetone. We're going to go ahead and take our acetone and we're going to pour it in the cup. And what the acetone is used for, this is used for smoothing it out. We're going to take the brush and our paint stick and once we apply our um, PC7 epoxy paste to the rusted out area, what we'll do is we will smooth it all out and make it look professional using our acetone our paint stick and our throwaway brush. So we're going to go ahead and get part B out and you want to use equal amounts. Equal amounts is the key here. You got part B right here and in a sense this is kind of like JB Weld but it's another brand that I have found to be better than JB Weld if that makes any sense. And then, um, we're going to go ahead and get a section of this that's going to be an equal amount. You see there? I'm going to add a little bit more of part A. There we go. And then, we're going to go down and mix this up and get ready to fix our rust. So let's go down there, let's mix this up, let's get our rust fixed, we got to do some prep work real quick, and then once the prep work's done, we can go ahead and finish this job out. Alright, now that we have everything we need down here, before we do anything, we're going to have to get my air hose over here, there it is. Let's go ahead and prep our area up and get it ready to use our PC7 epoxy paste. So once again before we go any further this was sandblasted. If you have minor rust like you're looking right here what you want to do is you want to um, have that area abrasive blasted. You'll have to go buy uh, one of those small Harbor Freight blasters for instance and you'll have to clean that out. You got to kill this rust. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our body hammer and I'm just going to go ahead, and you can see the sand falling out. We're going to go ahead and take care of that in a minute. And all I'm doing is pushing that metal back together, kind of sandwiching it together so it doesn't have a big gapped area. And then I'm going to take my air hose. get that sand out of there. We're now ready to go ahead and mix up our PC7 and go ahead and fill this in and get it all finished out. So here's our PC7 paste and what we're going to do is we're not going to use our paint stick or our brush yet. We're going to put that down there with our acetone and we're going to take our clean stick, the one we didn't use, put it down there and then we'll go ahead and take this stick and then we're going to mix these up thoroughly and make sure that everything is properly mixed, meaning there's no streaks or striping in them or anything what of the sort. All 
Okay, now that we got our epoxy mixed, let's go ahead and apply it to the areas need be. So we're look, working right here just to let everybody know that's caught us uh, late. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Bondo spreader just like this and then just as if we were using Bondo or putty, filler putty, um, we would go ahead and fill that area in. And we want to be as neat as possible about it. Only using it where we need it. And in some cases, like this right here, a paint stick might work out better. And you can see what's going on now, now that we are applying it. You can see how it's filling in all of the imperfections that we don't want. I'm trying to keep that off my hands. Um, I should have went ahead and put rubber gloves on. That would have been a helpful tip right there. You can kind of see what's going on now. See how nice that looks. And I'm taking my Bondo spreader and I am pushing it in. I'm pushing as hard as I can to get it into all of the areas. We don't want any air pockets um, once we're done. Now this stuff doesn't go far so I'm just letting you know that if you have several areas you might order several bottles of it and keep some in stock if need be. Once again, this is not for rotted rust where you have to weld. This is for something like this, minor rust. All right, this is minor. The rust is dead. It just has rust holes. And we're not on a rotisserie here. This is, we're doing this at home in our garage. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're fixing our car to the best of our knowledge. We're saving money and doing it ourselves. And that's what's going on here. Okay, so I've got my epoxy applied. And there's a little hole right here. There we go. I want to go ahead and get that off of there. And I've used almost all this epoxy on this. But it's very important that you make sure all the voids are filled in. And you can see I'm using both hands to do this with. And there you go, right here. Okay. All right. So now, now that we got that done, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to clean that up. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our acetone. And we're going to take our brush, we're going to dip it into our acetone. Let me lift that up there. So we're going to dip it into our acetone. We're not going to get a lot on there. And then we're just going to brush it, just like this. And what that acetone is going to do, that's going to smooth it out and feather everything where it blends in with the rest of the metal or the vehicle, where you won't even know that this was done. And I hear somebody asking, how long does that last? Will it last forever? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you an answer. It'll last longer than you own the car. I can tell you that. Is it guaranteed that it'll never fall out? No, I don't say it's guaranteed. But in the 42 years that I've been doing this, all right, I've never, ever had a problem with it. 
I hear somebody asking if they can use JB Weld to do the same thing. I don't know. I hear a lot of people use JB Weld, but I don't. This is what I use, PC7. All right. What we'll do, we'll go ahead and let that dry for about 45 minutes. We're going to come back, we're going to paint that black, and it will look like you've never seen before. It'll look exactly like the rest of the car. All right, now that it's been approximately 45 minutes, we're ready to go ahead and paint that. Now, as you can see, once again, I already painted the bottom of this floor. I taped off the areas that I needed to fix because I had to wait for the PC7 epoxy paste to get to my shop, and I didn't want to wait around. Um, I had a free time in my shop. I went ahead and painted it, but I taped it off where the bare metal was. So what I'm going to do, and you can paint this two ways. Now, you can get some high-quality... Uh, rust preventive, rust preventive black paint such as uh, Rust-Oleum Industrial or whatever and you can go ahead and spray paint that but I don't want to do that because when you spray paint it over something that's already been spray painted you're going to get dry spots and, and it's going to look tacky. So what I got here is I actually got some of the DTM paint that I used on the bottom of this car that's direct to metal paint. It's a high industrial enamel alkyd enamel paint that's specifically designed for bare metal use and I went ahead and put some hardener in it and what we're going to do we're going to take the throwaway brush and we're going to paint that and blend it all in using our brush and not a spray can. So I see that our repair came out really really nice it flowed out good and it looks professional what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and once again take our throwaway brush with our DTM Alkyd enamel and instead of spraying that on there we're gonna go ahead and brush it because we don't want overspray we want to blend the paint in alright now another thing that we could have done is we could have fixed this first we could have fixed this first and then painted the floor but once like I said I had a little bit of a free time the other day and I have a lot of stuff going on, so I went ahead while I was waiting on getting the uh, PC7 in. I was waiting to get that. I decided, well, I'm going to go ahead and paint it, and I'll just put some 2-inch tape over the repairs that I need. And you can see, look at that. It's blending right in. No problems. And there you go. Look at that. We fixed our minor rust. This is not made for major rust repairs. This is a minor rust situation. We went ahead and fixed that. I painted my hands black along with the area. I gotta wash those off. But we did that. It took us approximately, overall job, it took us approximately 10 minutes to repair it and another minute and a half to paint it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. My hand's doing the talking now. I don't want to touch my camera. And we'll see you later. Take it easy. And remember, the next time you need some rust repair done, get the PC7. It's going to give you a good deal. It's going to make everything work right. And it's going to say, looky what I just did. Okay? I just fixed my rust. And my rust is fixed. There it is right there. PC7 right here. You get the picture. Did I hold it there long enough? Talk to you later. Do it right, do it right, do it right, because if you ain't doing it right, you definitely aren't doing it at all. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.